special unit of police position themselves to serve warrants on MOVE members. The police at our door, they're saying, get out, you have to evacuate. We're going to have a police action here on your block. Just take a change of clothes. We're going to, we're going to protect your belongings. You'll be back in 24 hours. We, you mu if you don't leave, you're going to be arrested. I mean, we had a community of all kinds of people that, that, that we all supported each other, we all intermingled, we shared our thoughts, our concerns, and, and we just had a good time with each other because each one of us was trying to have something. You know, when I say have something, I mean, you know, we wanted to raise our, 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 our standards of living. In 1978, there was a confrontation between the MOVE organization and the city of Philadelphia. Some of the MOVE people were arrested and sent to jail. Their children had nowhere to go. Miss Louise James, whose brother founded MOVE, allowed those children to come and live in her home so that they could be cared for. We respected that about Miss James. The kids were they were like little animals. They just threw something on them as far as clothes, because I've given them clothes as far as food. At one time, they were eating under the garbage cans. So what the neighbors did, they took their garbage cans in, they bought new garbage cans, and they put bread in them. So the kids would go in the garbage cans, they would have bread. You know, they, would, they could eat bread. And then we got found out, and uh, the uh, parents were furious, you know. It really wasn't very militant at first. You know, it's just a lot of very, what we consider kind of strange looking people with the locks and, the, you know, it wasn't orthodox. And then it be gradually began to change, you know, and that's when we started, the trouble started. Me and my wife heard all this banging, we couldn't understand what it was, and uh, they began to board the front of the house. Uh, from that day on, it was like night and day. The first big problem we had was the raw meat that they kept outside. It was a big, you could imagine a big tin of raw, bloody meat sitting outside of your house. The loudspeakers went up um, in the spring of 84. All of a sudden, they became very combative. They became very militant. They became dangerous, actually. No goddamn fight, because it's going to be a no goddamn fight. You could not imagine. Uh, it's one thing to be two blocks away and hear it, but to live right next door, full blast in our bedroom. Then we had to contend with things inside our house, you know, uh, bugs that you couldn't do anything about them. I mean, they, uh, they just totally, the, the, the bugs took over our house, you know. My children woke up in the middle of the night from bug bites, crying from things biting them in their beds. And they would threaten to kill people. And they would name people by name. And my family was named as part of those people that they threatened to kill. We had tried all the other methods, uh, exterminating methods, call people in. And we decided to put sulfur bombs down. I actually leave the house for a day and put sulfur bombs down. Being a good neighbor, I went to the move people. I spoke to uh, Conrad first about it. He went completely berserk. You know, the bugs, are our, the bugs are our brothers and sisters. If you exterminate the bugs, you exterminate us. Well, they told me if I set those bombs off, that uh, when the revolution started, our doors would be the first ones would be kicked in and some kind of way our family would be first to go. I remember we had a picture window. I saw the, the book fly across. <laughs> The book fly across the window, and my husband was flying across the window, and, you know, he was physically attacked by, you know, by these people having a philosophical conversation. It was not uncommon that fights broke out, and, you know, one time guns were pulled, and my kids were down the street. It was very scary. I didn't know where my kids were. I couldn't go out of the house. It, it was like living in a war zone. It was horrible. They wanted to make social change, but their methods were destructive. And so it ended up having a destructive result. How will this have to end for you to feel safe? Uh, for them to be incarcerated, or I don't want to see anyone hurt or killed, mm -hmm. but better them than me.
they came in our neighborhood. And we want them out. And I feel that uh, whatever has to be done has to be done. Whatever means are necessary. And that's what I want. I could actually see my house being blown up. Everybody was just, we, 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 it was like a torture to watching our life just burn down to the ground. Uh, I mean, baby pictures, family members' pictures, everything destroyed, mementos of our, our youth destroyed, everything was gone. I mean, even though they told us, they didn't protect anything. They burned everything to the ground. 